Hello and welcome again. In this video, we will discuss the basic ideas of public cryptography or what is also called asymmetric cryptography. So uh, this is the most important idea that we're going to discuss now. Now, remember that in a symmetric uh, cryptography, we have uh, the same key for encryption and decryption and the problem, of course, sharing the key and the other problems that we also discussed. Now, the main difference between uh, Oh, the difference that between public key cryptography and symmetric is that each party has two keys. So instead of having only one key for encryption and decryption, we're going to have two keys. One of the keys is going to be a private key, which the name indicates is going to be private, and the other one is going to be a public key, which public key means here that any can anyone can know that key. And the idea uh, here is that... Um, the public key can, everyone, everyone can use it, but the private key, only the party who has that can use it. So let me show you this with a, uh, a, an idea with locks and keys. So for example, let's say I have here, uh, let's uh, pay attention here to Alice 1 and Bob. Now, let's say Alice wants to send a secret message to Bob. So what Bob has in the side of Bob, Bob will have two keys. As I mentioned before, it will have a public key which you, we can imagine is kind of like a lock that is, in this case, unlocked. And he will have a private key, which is just the key that can open this lock here. Now, the idea is the following. If Alice here wants to send a message to Bob, because this is a public key, Alice can actually use that public key to lock the message, or in other words, to encrypt it. So imagine that, for example, you have a box and you want to send a message to Bob, the only thing that Alice has to do is she has to take that message, lock it, or in other words, encrypt it, and send it to Bob. Now, Alice uh, doesn't have any keys in this case. She just knows the public key for Bob, which is she knows how to encrypt, but she doesn't know how to decrypt because only Bob knows that. So once Alice encrypts the message or locks the message with this public key, this lock that is here unlock is sent to Bob locked. Now Bob now, because he has a private key which he doesn't share with anyone but himself, he can actually unlock the message. Now that idea is a very important idea in asymmetric cryptography. So having a public key and a private key has a lot of advantages. Anyone can encrypt messages and send it to Bob, but only Bob can encrypt those messages. And that actually solves the problem of the key uh, establishment or sharing the key. Alice doesn't need to know the Bob's key. She only needs to know how to encrypt it and that's all. So that's basically the idea. Now, the other thing that is uh, good about this idea is that Bob can actually communicate with a lot of people. So let's say we have, we have many Alice's here. Alice 1, Alice 2, Alice 3, and you have many Alice's here. and up to Alice N. Now, in the problem that we discussed earlier, that we had a lot of keys for every pair of people, we need a lot of one care, pair or one key. In this case, that's not necessary because if all these Alice's want to communicate with, with Bob, they only have to grab the public key, which is just for Bob, the public key of Bob. Now, every one of those has to just has to use that key because if they want to send a message, the only thing they have to do to make it secret is grab that public key, encrypt it or lock it, send it to Bob, and now, and now Bob knows what to do with that because it's going to unlock it in here. That's why I put a line here because this is all that is going on in here is going to be private and this what happens here is public. So the Alice's here will also just need to grab a public key, the public key of Bob. Now, the other situation when they have to communicate, two parties have to communicate. So every party will have this situation that I'm describing here. Every person will have a public key, which what the name indicates, they're going to share that with anyone. And they will have a private key, which is just specific for only this lock that is right here. Of course, this is all abstract now, and we will see later how we're going to implement these things in, in reality. And in reality, what's going to happen later is that this public key and this private key are actually going to be numbers. And so we're going to have to review 
or just go over some of the properties or number theory to be able to do those things. Now for now, let's just imagine that that's the situation. We have a lock that is unlocked, that is a public key, and the private key is just like a normal key. Now, so everybody will have that situation there. So anyone can encrypt, as I just mentioned, anyone can encrypt with the public key, but only Bob can decrypt with the private key. And so that communication from, from Alice to Bob will be secure. Now, if you want to communicate with one another, so every party will have the same situation. So Bob will have a, he, he will have his uh, public key, which is the Bob's key that I'm representing with this lock, and he will have a, a private key. Same thing with Alice. Alice will also have a public key, which is she's going to share here with anyone. So this space that I'm marking down over here means this is anyone can see it. So even Eve, we remember, is the person who is always listening to the channel. She can also grab that those those keys there. But that's not a problem because the only thing that she can do is encrypt it, but she cannot decrypt it because she doesn't have the private keys. So what happens here is if Bob wants to send something to Alice, the only thing that Bob has to do is he has to grab uh, Alice's public key, encrypt it or lock it because she, he can lock it and then send it to Alice. Now Alice will have her own private key, so she will be the only one who can unlock that lock. In this case, then you will solve the problem of sharing keys because you don't have to share this key or this key to do the decryption. And it solves also the problem of too many keys. So every person will have two keys, one that is public, anyone could share, could share, and the other one which is private that is used for decryption. So that's basically the idea. So this is just an abstract idea. Of course, these locks here are not really actually locks. They're going to be some numbers that we're going to use later for, for encryption and decryption. So I hope this, this idea is clear because it's a very important idea in asymmetric uh, cryptography. So that's basically the idea of asymmetric cryptography. We're going to have a public key and a private key. And the public key, anyone can know what that is. That's not a problem. Uh, the private key is, of course, something that you have to keep private only for the person who wants to decrypt the messages. Now, both symmetric and asymmetric cryptography are used today. Uh, even though this is a really good idea, uh, the asymmetric cryptography usually is slower in, uh, in software. Uh, usually it's slower. So basically what happens is uh, if you want to communicate uh, two things and there's a large amount of data that it has to go from, for example, from Alice to Bob, you will want to use symmetric cryptography because that's usually faster. Now, the problem of sharing the key is not a problem because if Alice and Bob want to share a key, for example, Alice can decide, okay, we're going to make a key for symmetric communication. So Alice will grab Bob's public key and take the key that she, she wants to send, not this key, but other key for, for the uh, symmetric cryptography, lock it and send it to Bob. So that, that way then they can share a key if they decide to do symmetric cryptography. So again, today both algorithms are used, both are uh, very useful and it's dependent on the application, symmetric and asymmetric cryptography, they kind of complement each other because for large, usually, this is not always the case, but usually for large amount of data, you're going to use symmetric cryptography and for sharing keys and something that is not that a large pieces of data, you will want to use asymmetric cryptography. Now, so as I mentioned, what happens here is the key establishment is solved uh, here because you can share secret keys using asymmetric cryptography. So you just share the key, you encrypt, let's say, for example, here, Alice wants to send a key here to Bob. So let's say, this is the key K that I want to send to Bob to transmit large amounts of data. So she's going to take that key, grab Bob's public key, lock it or encrypt it, and send it to Bob. Now, Bob will get now this key, which is encrypted, put it here, unlock it, and then they will both have the same key. So they will have the key. Okay. And now with that key, which is the symmetric a key, they will now can communicate using symmetric cryptography, which is usually used for large amounts of data. So that's the idea here. The idea here is that we already solved the key establishment problem using that. 
Now, other ideas that are important with uh, asymmetric cryptography is um, the null repudiation idea. The null repudiation is, uh, remember, the sender and receiver cannot deny having sent or received a message. Remember, the, in the previous video, we, we talked about the bank. The bank can fake or say that, for example, didn't receive the, the message. Now, in this particular case, we're going to use asymmetric cryptography to uh, actually check that the sender and receiver they actually received the message or read the message in whatever the case is. And this is going to be uh, realized using digital signatures, which um, we might discuss at the end of the class. Now, the other idea is identification, which is verify the identities of the sender and receiver. That's also another problem when communicating uh, through an insecure channel. How do you know that the person who sent the message is actually that person? Now, that is also a problem that is going to be solved with asymmetric cryptography and it's going to also be realized using digital signatures. And, and that's all I have to say for this video. Now, uh, the most important part here, let me scroll up, is this idea here. The idea of asymmetric cryptography, again, very important, is we're going to have for every party two keys. One of them is going to be public, which anyone can grab, and the other one is going to be private, which is intended only for the use of that user. Now, if you look at this idea here, uh, if you have a network of, for example, like in the previous example, 5,000, previous video, 5,000 people, then every person will only need two keys. So you'll need 10,000, compare that to the number we computed last time, it was about of uh, really, really big. But in this case, then you, do, you don't need to do that. So solving that problem there with a public key and a private key. So I'm gonna stop the video now. So in the next video, we continue with these ideas of public cryptography and some of the background we need to cover to discuss in detail what this public key are and the private key are for asymmetric cryptography. So I will see you in the next video.